अपनी कुर्सी की पेटी बांध लीजिए मौसम बिगड़ने वाला है जी हाँ मौसम बिल्कुल बिगड़ने वाला है बिकॉज आज से पहले आपने कभी भी सोचा नहीं होगा कि पठान मूवी से हम इकोनॉमिक्स सीख सकते हैं कंफ्यूज कैट रेडी फॉर अ न्यू सेगमेंट विच आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल इकॉन बॉली सो आई इन और आई यू आउट हेलो एवरी वन आई एम योर होस्ट स्वप्निल करकरे चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट एंड एन इकोनॉमिस्ट एंड दिस चैनल is all about learning and understanding economics and finance so without wasting much time let us jump on the economics lessons from the movie pathan yes lessons there are two things pathan teaches us so in the movie there is a scene which shows that the government of india never negotiates with terrorists The background story of Jim the character played by John Abraham is based on this philosophy of not negotiating with the terrorists why is this policy implemented in almost all countries in real life too assume that in general government started negotiating with terrorists aise khule aam sabke sath negotiate karna shuru kar liya now terrorists will know that they can demand anything like they can ask for higher ransom releasing a few militants and so on and so forth what's wrong in it this creates a dangerous situation because it may incentivize terrorists to take more hostages attack more cities in the future and basically get their work done in a coercive manner they can create disorder in the society right economists like to give names to certain things and this thing is called moral hazard now let me give another example of moral hazard if you have a car insurance you may be less careful when driving because you know that if there is any damage then you will be covered by the insurance company wait 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 i know what you will say that probably no one will drive carelessly just because they have insurance um i don't know maybe maybe not also because uh, probably you wouldn't do it but choi tribiani can do you remember this oh, i can't believe this This sucks. <laughs> When I had insurance, I could get hit by a bus or or catch on fire, you know. But it wouldn't matter. Now I got to be careful. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. There's never a good time to have to stop catching on fire. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I got to go get a job. I'm going to go see my agent. Okay. Make sure to look both ways before you cross the street. Did you make me pay for you got to teach? people can behave differently when they are protected or insured so that means if we start driving carelessly because of insurance then that will create problem not only for us or our families but also for insurance companies because they may have to pay more claims than they anticipated and therefore if you read your documents carefully which you should you will see that the company doesn't pay 100% of all the damages you have to shell out some proportion of it let me give you another example assume a bank did some risky business and then got involved in a crisis situation now that bank has to sell their assets so that they can give their money back to depositors like you and i and also they have to repay some of their creditors and obviously the owners or the shareholders assume that there is a very big kind of scandal or crisis and the bank does not have enough money to give it to the depositors so basically if i am having a savings bank account in that bank my money is at risk what happens in such situations in some countries the government comes into the picture and says to the depositors that guys you don't worry we are here for your service so don't be afraid we will give you your money back i will be happy because all my money will be returned but what signal does it send to other banks and especially those banks who are doing good business basically the signal is that you don't have to worry you can also do some risky business and in case you face something similar situation like this then there will be no problem there will be no issue the depositors money will be taken care by the government 
And if this kind of government intervention continues and banks kind of get into habit of having such kind of interventions and risky business, then it will be more difficult to manage the entire financial system. That's why we have deposit insurance system where the banks pay insurance premium to the company which will basically refund the depositors money if the bank is in a dire situation like this. But there is always a limit to everything and so is for the deposit insurance amount. For example, in India, the limit is 5 lakh rupees. So if bank is getting shut, the depositors money will be returned only up to 5 lakh rupees, not above that. What it does, it tells banks that boss, you cannot do risky business. Although your deposits are insured, they are not wholly insured. So beware of all the risks in your business. Otherwise, people will start withdrawing money from your bank if they smell something fishy. That's the moral hazard from the bank's perspective. That was our first lesson from Pathan. But Pathan does not stop here. There is one more lesson, as I've already told you. In terrorist versus government situation, let us assume that the government pays some ransom or releases another terrorist which it has captured like a couple of years ago and the terrorist releases some of the hostages. Okay, that's the situation we are in. Now, if you are the government, do you really believe terrorists that they will release the hostages after you pay some ransom or release the another terrorist? Right? There are trust issues. Don't you feel so? Or what if the government releases hostages now and you come to know that terrorists bomb some city a month later? So in this situation, the government does not have full information of what's going on in the minds of terrorists. This is a classic case of information asymmetry. The terrorists have more information about their true intentions and capabilities while the government has limited information. And because of limited information, the government might decide to negotiate with terrorists which might again lead to a number of problems as we have just checked in the moral hazard problem. But by the way, have you seen similar situations in other movies too? Remember a movie named Zameer starring Ajay Devgan and Abhishek Bachchan? Or Sonam Kapoor starrer Neerja? Or a classic movie A Wednesday starring Nasruddin Shah and Anupam Kher? Right? Those movies had similar plots. A plane is hijacked, and there are some demands from the terrorists that the government had to fulfill or a bomb threat is given to release some terrorists and blah blah blah. Now, information asymmetries is a situation where one party in a transaction has more information than the other party. This can create a problem because it can lead to one party making a decision based on incomplete or inaccurate information which can result in a negative outcome. Assume you are all ready for a dream interview. What happens in interview? People ask you questions, right? Why are they asking you these questions? Because they don't know about how capable you are, right? Just because you have scored 90% doesn't mean that you are smart enough to work in that organization, right? Therefore, company asks you some questions and tests your abilities. Then at some point, you get to ask some questions like CTC, bonus, work-life balance and so on and so forth. Why are you asking those questions? Because you don't know the exact nature of the company, right? The answers are unknown to both of you. The company manager can tell you that you will get a 10% bonus and no work on weekends and whatnot. But they can lie too, right? Uh, they know the real situation, right? Which can be like 70 hours work in a week. Plus, you will hardly be able to beat inflation with your salary increment and so on and so forth. That's the real situation. But the company might lie to you. So all this information is available only to the company but not you. But don't be sad. You have more information about your skill sets and ability and knowledge. The company might not know that you have faffed out in many questions or that you will be leaving the job in six months to pursue your master's degree even though you have faked the answer the question where do you see five is down the line. So there's this information asymmetry in this transaction. Company doesn't know your intention of doing masters and you don't know company's intention of not providing work-life balance. So what to do? You can ask someone who actually works there or have worked in that company. You can go to some portals online where all these things are discussed. The company also kind of does their background check and 
take you through different levels of interviews so that the manager and the company knows you better. Now, in the context of movies or any spy movie for that matter, there are agents planted by government in terrorist organizations and also there are agents planted by terrorists in governments. So here too, both want that additional piece of information which is the missing link in their respective missions, right? Sometimes there are double agents too, which you might have seen in some movies. So what did you learn from the movie Pathan? Apart from obviously the indisputable stardom of SRK, there are two bonus economic concepts. One is moral hazard and second is information asymmetry. I'm sure there might be numerous other concepts in the movie and also that these two concepts which we have discussed might have been explained through other movies too. But here was my shot at explaining these concepts through Pathan movie. Movies and pop culture are undoubtedly the best entertainment form, but they are all central to humans, our behaviors and all the idiosyncrasies we carry along. And economics is in a way study of human behaviors. And I believe that we can see many examples of many economics and financial concepts through movies. I hope you enjoyed this episode. So please, kursi ki peti band lo aur is episode ko like karo, channel ko subscribe karo aur sab ke saath share karo. Thank you and see you soon.